Hello everyone. Today I have some new watercolors. These are from Supervision. These were kindly sent to me by Supervision. They have offered a coupon that I will link in the description box for 15% off. It's only for a week, but it is off of any of the four sets from Supervision. This is the Ocean Paradise set. These are rock mica layered watercolor and they look like a lot of fun. They've essentially taken watercolors. Some of them are granulating. Some of them are not, it looks like. And then they've taken mica and the listing says that they've heated it to 800 degrees or something to add stability. I'm not into all the science of that. I'm, these just look beautiful and they look like a lot of fun. Taking these all out of the box and this is what the tubes look like. It just says supervision and says China. It does have the number and then they list the pigment information. For this one it's mica and PR146. I recently had a new art friend and she had offered to send me some beautiful Sennelier paper so I could try it because she knew I would love it. And she surprised me with a whole box of gifts and like it made me cry. I was I, I couldn't believe that she was so generous with me. And she also sent this beautiful palette. This is from a, a Russian artist like Politra, I think is the name. And she used to have a yeah, Etsy shop. And I don't think she has an Etsy shop anymore, but she is. I did look her up on Instagram. But wasn't it so sweet of my friend to send me this? So I'm going to be filling this palette to use today. I'm gonna to set this aside a bit so it can dry. Uh, they have two colors or listing as chameleon colors. And that means they should change color and different lighting and everything like that. So um, I have a few fine tech paints like that. Those are pretty cool. So these are not budget. <laughs> they are, I, I will warn you, these are not budget. These are pricey and they, it looks like I just saw they have four different sets. Raw material, toner, pearlescent, mineral, mica, and Arabic gum preservative. And then they have some safety information. So yesterday I went ahead and poured these into pans so I could start letting them dry and see how they held up. So this is what they look like the next day just to, I don't know how much longer I'm going to let them dry. They are beautiful. <laughs> All right, I really wanted to start going ahead and uh, swatching these out. I'm just gonna dab a drop. This is the fastest and easiest way to me. I usually do swatches a few different ways, but I intend to use these to paint out and then I can hang these in the windows to start light fast testing. This is made from Mica and PR146 is the pigment they're listing. And they're listing that as a light fast rating of three stars. I don't know if it's three out of five or three out of four. Okay, oh, this is really pretty. Really, really pretty. It's like a coral color. And that that's one thing I did find interesting about these is there's only numbers, there's no names. And this is way too pretty to not have a name. This should be called Coral Reef. I'm not going to name all their paints, but it's going to be hard not to because that's so pretty. Okay, I'm going to go in with some plain water at the bottom and see if we get some granulation or how they flow. And, oh, that's so pretty. So the mica is settling if you use more paint. And then, oh, see, I think you can do different effects and things with these and it'll be really fun to experiment but i'm going to go in with a little more water and see how we go since i went with a lot of paint that's really pretty all right i just love paints okay next i'm using 329 and this is made from mica pr122 and pb28 Oh, it is a pretty purple. Look at that. That's so pretty. All right, I made the swatch bigger, but it's, <laughs> and I'm not on camera. Um, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna put a little more water because I did use quite a big dollop of paint there. 
And then I'm gonna do the same and go in with the bottom and try to go in with some clean water and see how it granulates. Um, but PR122 is not a granulating color and that's what I noticed with my Schmincke, um super granulating paints is I need a granulating magenta. That is a gaping hole in my palette. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. Oh, that's really cool. All right, that's really pretty. Okay, will I be able to choose a favorite? I do not believe you can purchase any of these tubes individually, sadly, at this time, but maybe eventually they will do that. That's really pretty. 322. It says they've made used mica and PV23. Oh, this is pretty too. So this is a more blue toned violet. It's really pretty. And the mica is different. Um, I was wondering if it just might be gold mica in each, but then it's not. This looks like a kind of a green based mica, which is interesting, but could be different according to the light. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a little more water again. See what happens. It'd be fun to experiment with these. Okay, that's pretty too, but these two are my favorite. This 329 definitely has some gold mica. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. And this definitely has some kind of a pinkish hued mica. I'm gonna set this aside to dry and we'll do the next colors. Next is 321. They're saying this is mica and PR122. So the mica must have given it the color. I'm using quite a bit of paint, but you can get different effects using different paint and different water is what they, the listing said. And I think you could also get really different effects using different textured of watercolor paper. This is, it says cold press, but it's very smooth cold press actually. Okay, that's really cool. Oh, look, it's separating and it's got some, looks like some violet. I'm gonna go up again and add more water and see what it does. Since I did, I used quite a bit of paint, but it's really pretty. It's separate, it's color separating and it's got some turquoise, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but it's separating and it's getting a little bit of turquoise and blue and violets. <laughs> I don't know if that's coming out on the camera or not, but it's really cool. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. You could do all different things. Oh, but they're so beautiful. Oh, how much fun are we going to have with these? 311. This is a very unique color. I forgot to look at the pigment information. I'm going to add lots of water because it seems like the more water, the more interesting it is. So, oh, that's really cool. Okay, this is separating out. It kind of has a dark teal, and then it's separating out with reds. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing red and a deep, kind of a deep turquoise, reds and violets. 
I don't know if that's coming across on camera again, but that's really cool. And look, this is separating out more. So you've kind of got a different, this is so cool because you have like the mica, you have some granulating colors and the water and the watercolors doing different things. This kind of looks like an alien right now. So this is the other chameleon. That's why there's so many different colors. I'm sorry, I keep going off camera. And this they're listing using mica, PR146 and PB28. Next is 327. And they are saying that that is mica with PR146 and PB36. I didn't put quite as much pigment on there. Um, this is more of a muted color. It kind of looks like almost gray. It looks like a, like a dreary rainy day. This one is not as bright and pretty as the others, but gives a different color. And I didn't notice as much mica either, but I don't know if I just didn't use enough um, paint. So this one's not doing much for me right now. We'll see after it dries. Maybe it does something. Do something color. <laughs> I was wowed by all the rest. This one's not wowing me. <laughs> the rest of these are just way cool. I need to finish my swatches, so I can't play with this right now, but I want to play and just tip it upside down and swirl it all different ways, but we might have to do that later. <laughs> Next is 312. Um, they're listing this as Mica and PG7. So this one is probably going to be one of my favorites. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, let's see how it swatches out. Okay. it's got so it has the most gorgeous gorgeous turquoise mica and then it's swatching out to be more green it's swatching out to be more green and i want the turquoise so i hope it gets back to turquoise <laughs> it's so pretty though um so i think you could probably Oh, the, the mica, the mica in this is what makes it so gorgeous. The mica and then I'm going to go in with more water. Oh, how fun. Okay. That's really pretty. I especially like it with the mica. I would use more pigment next time to keep more of that mica. This is 309 and they're listing this again with mica and PG7 again. Came out looking almost purple, but I'm guessing mica can change the colors. Oh, this is interesting. This is like a green, almost a seaweed color because the mica they've used is different. I'm going up and going to get some water. This actually kind of looks like Daniel Smith's Green Appetite Genuine swatching out. Um, the way that it separates kind of red with the green and but it's not as it doesn't look like it's as granulating. It's not near as granulating but that's the kind of color effects I'm getting. And then they have the added mica. So you might want to play with that if you have that color. Add some mica to that. Is 317. They're listing that mica with PG7 and PY3. So this looks like it'll be lily pad green. Yes. Oh, that's pretty. It's kind of pearly. They didn't uh, use a different color mica this time. It's just kind of pearlescent. It's very pretty though. Let's see what this one does. 
Okay, so this one just has like some pearlescent, looks like. But it's a very pretty color. But I don't see any color separation or anything with this one. And I think this might be the first one I'm not seeing any different colors with. But it's very pretty. It's like a pearly lily pad green. So there's those. And I'm going to set those aside. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but this is coming through with green and violet. I mean, it's violet on, it looks like on the camera, I can't get it to come through. It's way cool. It's the mica, I think is violet. So, um, but look at those. <laughs> so cool. So the last one is 323 and they're listing it as mica and PBK7 which would be black, I would guess, but the mica could change the color. Oh, it is. The mica is gold or kind of a antique gold. And then the under color is brown. So I can see a little bit of the black pigment, um, but it's it looks kind of brown. It looks kind of uh, almost brown toned, but the mica looks kind of like an antiqued gold, an antique gold. It kind of reminds me of the White Knights um, golds, if you have those. Um, that's what it's reminding me of for golds. So I believe these have dried and see how much more the shimmer came out and you could definitely play with these and get more granulation, but they're just so pretty. Like the granulation is just a bonus, but the mica and the colors themselves are just beautiful. So I can't wait to paint. I've been playing with these. They are a lot of fun to play with. They're basically a hybrid between watercolor and mica. The different paper you put them on can affect how they look. And let's see, I've got some cellulose paper. This is what they look like on cellulose paper. And this is one of those uh, chameleon colors. These two right here are the chameleon colors, these two and see how in the light they change. Um, if you put the light one way, this mica looks purple. And then if you put it another way, it kind of looks red violet. And then on other times it looks blue. So the mica changes color, the watercolor itself does not. And this one, it looks like a turquoise mica. And then Let's see what other color did I get from that. So those are interesting. This one is definitely one of my favorites. The colors are not coming across on camera. I don't know how to get the colors. I don't, I'm trying to get the colors to come across on camera like they do for me. And I'm doing a horrible job because <laughs> they're really cool. And I'm not getting the, this comes off as a turquoise sheen. I'm not sure if that's coming across on the camera. So I started, um, I started naming mine because these colors are too pretty to not have names, but um, I'm trying to get the colors on different paper. Uh, and here they are when you I swatched them on hot press paper and I used a lot of pigment. So depending on the how much pigment you use or how much water you use, you can get different effects of course. And then it settled more of the mica and you can't see very much of the, so if you use a lot of paint, you can get a lot of the mica. If you use less of the paint, you get more of the watercolor and less of the mica, is what it seems like. Here is what they look like on black. On black, you just mostly see the mica. Uh, it is very pretty. It's pretty much like you would get from metallic paints. So here they are on cotton paper. And this cotton paper has some sparkle to it, so it's extra pretty. But look how pretty those are. I think they're really pretty. They're gonna be a lot of fun. 
Okay, so here's some more colors. And I'm trying to show how the colors change, but I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of that. Here again, this is the one for some reason it's hard to translate, but that is true about digital work and that's why um, I don't think most artists use very much mica in their work because when they take photographs of it, it's very hard to get the, um, it's very hard to get that on camera. I am having an equally hard time showing just how beautiful these are. This one especially, it has a turquoise mica that is absolutely gorgeous. This has a violet mica, one in some of the light, and then if I turn it another way, it can be green and, and then it could be blue. It is the coolest thing. And then here is the last one that looks like it's got some kind of brown undertones or a little bit of, of dark gray, depending on how much water you use. And then it has kind of an antique gold mica. Some of the colors have a little bit of granulation with the mica. So that's super cool as well. All right, so let's do some painting. I mean, you could use some acrylic inks that might be fun. I don't want to get very messy today, so I'm not going to do inks today. I think it'd be fun to paint a jellyfish. So I'm just going to use my brush with water and with water kind of paint the shape of a jellyfish and I want to add quite a bit of water because I want to be able to have this paint all mix around and I'm going to start with this pretty coral color kind of a it'd be really pretty as a coral reef I'm not noticing any need to re-wet these and they are re-wetting just fine. And then I'm just going to drop in some of the color. I'm just using an Arteza sketchbook because I think these are gonna be a lot of fun to use in sketchbooks. I think they'll be fun to use on all different papers, but I'm gonna start with some sketchbooks. And then while that's wet, I'm gonna kind of play with it and let it roll around and that will be fun. I think that will be fun to let the mica settle. And then you could do some um, dots, that kind of thing. And just, I think this is what's magical about watercolor to me, is just watching the different things you can do when you add water. It's so much fun. There's so many, so many fun things to do. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then see the granulation comes out. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and add some of the little dealy bops. And then I think in the center, I just want to add some really like loose. I probably should have let that dry, but I don't, I'm just having fun, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll let that dry. I'm just using a mop brush and then I'm just going to just use some water first. I like that look. Now I'm going to add some of the purple or violet color and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drop it in and I can see quite a bit of that gold.
but you could really, this would be fun to mix the colors as well. But for today, I just want to show the pretty colors. All right, I still want to go. I really don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing, <laughs> but it's so fun. Sometimes I do this if I'm doing landscapes because I just love to watch the paint flow. Add kind of some dots, get more pigment on there. All right, and I'm gonna do some I don't want it to be too perfect. And then I will take uh, with a wet brush, I'm gonna go in the center and add the whatever you call it, the kind of see-through <laughs> stuff. Okay, just really quick, and then we'll let it dry and do its thing. And paint it over here. Again, I, I don't really, I didn't plan any of this, so I'm just playing, but that's I think that's what's so fun about new supplies is just kind of gets you to play and that's always the most fun. But really easy. And then I'm going to use this turquoise color. I love watching the paint disperse and the water. It's just magical. All right. Add some more water just to see what it does. And then I'm gonna go in with more paint and add some dots. I really want it to have that kind of unperfect look. All right, now I'm going to go in with a damp brush that I've wiped on the side and add some more water. Because you really can do different things. Good. It's on the underside of them. Just some quick fun. Little jellyfish. Add some splatters for fun when after this is dried. And this one is all the way dried now. And see how the colors separate from the mica, which is a lot of fun. So now I could go back and I think it would be good to go back and then add some layers with real um, just regular watercolors to deepen the values and everything or go back with colored pencils um, or ink, something like that. That's probably what I will do. But this was a fun um, to give you guys some ideas of different things you could do. This is what I do in my sketchbooks. I play and have fun, I experiment. You can always go back later. You can do colored pencil, you can throw gouache at it. 
you can just keep playing with it and keep learning and experimenting. I decided to go in and add just a little bit from my uh, Paul Rubens watercolors just to deepen the values a little bit. Um, these were really pretty and I can't wait to play with them more. I really did like to use them in combination with other watercolors. I can't wait to play and experiment more with them with different papers and everything like that. And I also noticed some chameleon mica powders that looked really cool. You can of course make your own. You want to try just adding the different micas to your own watercolors. You might check those out. I tried making some with the Arteza mica powders that they sent me. I think I made six and I decided personally I make all my food from scratch. So I'm not really into making watercolors from scratch at this time in my art journey. But if you want the best budget way, that is definitely the way to go. But I do have mica, several micas that I did try uh, that Arteza sent me. And I think I made about six pans. You do need to add enough gum arabic so that this, uh, so that the mica doesn't rub off on your fingers. And then in my etcher sketchbook, this is the perfect sketchbook. I went in and painted this hummingbird and it was really fun and that's how I think these are best used is mixed with other watercolors. Um, I, I think these are too, personally for me, they're too expensive to use just like little accents. I'll use my regular shimmer paints for that. I found them really fun to mix them with regular watercolors and use a little bit of them and a little bit of the uh, traditional watercolors. I found that really fun. But here is the hummingbird that I painted and still playing and still, um, I'll be continuing to play with these, but uh, that was a lot of fun to paint, and I just love that turquoise color. For my palette, I decided I would just add some primary mixing colors as well as some gold and white gouache, and this the way I can use the palette really good this way, I think. Um, so I'm very much going to enjoy playing with this more, and uh, yeah, I've already got to refill a couple colors again. <laughs> I had fun with these, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I just would like to thank Supervision again for sending me these. These were really fun and I really enjoyed them. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.